It has now been kissed. Again. Really? Again? Let's do some sides. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on the back and that's just drying right now so I don't want to upset the glue. We probably could do something with it because it's been a couple hours uh, but I just like to be safe. So this is how I measure out my sides. There's a, a couple ways that you can do it. You can use a piece of plexi, you can use a piece of paper. Um, I use all the methods above but this is my standard side outline. You're going to need a set of scraped sides, a little bit of tape, a file and uh, a pencil. So all we're gonna have to do is line this up, we're gonna straighten the side on the joiner and then we're gonna trace the profile onto there. We're gonna mark our center or the waist I should say, not the center, but the waist of the guitar and then we're gonna bend it. So, without further ado, uh, I just like to use this blue tape. It's uh, kind of a staple in my shop. I, I, I really can't live without it. And I just make sure both grain lines are, all grain lines are pointed in the same direction and you've got a nice book match. And this is not hypercritical, but, you know, for the material sake, let's get it lined up. So, uh, I'll take this over to the joiner and get it straightened out. Alright, so here we are at the joiner. Um, as always, keep some ears around. One of the, my best uh, shop tips is get a bunch of these. You know, they're, they're not that expensive. It's a lot cheaper than hearing aids. And I keep them hanging up by most of my tools. So all I have to do is grab it and put it on. So I'm going to straighten this out, and it should only take a couple passes. It'll be really quick. So, as you can see, the entire edge has now been kissed. Again. Really? Again? This whole edge has been flattened out and kissed down. If there, there's like a little lift right at the end where it falls off the pattern, you don't have to straighten out the whole side because you really don't want to lose the width of this yet. We have to make that determination on the width later. So uh, let's do that right now. All right. So now that we've got this in place, uh, I like my I like to get a little bit of extra room on the sides for bending. Uh, I don't use one of those fancy side benders. I just uh, I'm a blowtorch and a pipe kind of a guy. So I like to have minimum 30 and a half inches. Uh, between my front and back edges, it gives me just enough room to not burn my fingers too badly. So one of the other things is to figure out your depth. Uh, because this is going to be a slightly smaller bodied guitar, uh, it's a 635 scale, I want it to make it slightly deeper. So normally uh, my neck ends like 91 to about 95, 96 uh, at the tail. Uh, I might go a few millimeters deeper than that just to make up for the smaller body. So I'd say I'll go 93 to about 97, 98. So it's going to be a little bit of a thicker guitar here. And now I start to look at what the grain is doing, making sure that my flat side is close to here where I've got my waist mark. So First things first, I don't want this to move once I start marking things out. So I've got that clamped in and that clamped in. So I just am I'm holding it in place so it doesn't scoot about. First things first, I'm going to mark my waist here. And then because I've got the whole profile, I'm just going to very quickly go back and forth. And again, this is not hypercritical. Uh, if you feel like you need to know where the end is, you could make a little mark here 
at the two ends. I generally don't, but uh, when I was starting out, that was a little helpful thing that I learned. So that way I knew when I could stop bending or when I had to do some more. So now, uh, because this line is only marked for the waist on one side, that's where the small triangular file comes from. I think that this is a, a saw file for sharpening a handsaw. I just take it very carefully and give a little mark across both. Not enough to cause a fraction line uh, from the inlet, but just enough so it can be felt. That's all I want. Uh, because that's going to be cut away, it doesn't matter. So now, with my my waste mark marked, uh, I'm going to take this to the bandsaw and cut down to my profile. So now we're at the bandsaw. I'm going to cut this out. Uh, I've got a 3 8 inch blade over here. And as always, my ears are down here. So I'm going to fire up the dust collector because dust is the enemy of lungs. And we'll get this cut. It takes just a moment. So that's cut. Uh, I like to save these. Uh, you can use these kinds of offcuts for rings and a rosette or for other di design features if you want uh, a mahogany element or a rosewood element depending on what you're doing, uh, what material you're using. Uh, I always save these. Uh, I I've got mountains of this stuff, but you never know when you need a material like this. So uh, as you can see, I left just a kiss of a line Again, it's not hypercritical. The, the, the important thing is that you get the general shape on here because we're going to be sanding and planing on all of this at a later point in time. So, uh, let's get this bent. Alright, so, it's time to play a fire. Don't get burnt. Um, this is, as a lot of people have noticed, uh, it is indeed a cross-section of a spinnaker pipe from a sailboat. Um, so, uh, just go down to your local marina. There's a whole bunch of them out in the water. They're really easy to find. So, um, I like to use just a, a, a bottle of propane, you know, just the regular old stuff, to heat this up. Uh, meanwhile, I still have my sides here, and so I'm going to be bending these as soon as the pipe is warm. So you don't, it doesn't take very long. So I'm going to get these a little bit wet. They don't need to be soaking wet. Uh, I'm just going to take them and run them under water. That's all I need, just regular old tap water. I'm going to try not to drip across the, uh, the shop too much with this as it uh, dribbles water. So. so hopefully this has had enough time to warm up. It's almost there. Uh, I forgot to mention, I have these marked as which one is the outside, so that way I can keep my bookmark straight. My waist mark here, this is why I like to feel attacked really, and understanding which way this is going to bend. So I want this to bend this way, uh, upwards. So that means I'm going to start with the O facing the 4, and then again I feel this mark here with my thumb. Make sure that this is perpendicular to the iron, at which point I'm going to come across here, pull a little bit on it, and then while the heat starts to come through, I just feel the wood, and you'll see it's starting to want to bend a little bit, and this wood is really easy to bend and really difficult all at the same time because it wants to crinkle and basically go every which way except flat. I'm going to test it against my mold, which is actually pretty close. And once I straighten out these edges, that waist is going to be right there. Moving onward, uh, I'm just letting a little bit of heat come into this. Let the water do the work, and you want to try to get this about done in one shot, 
because anytime you come back you're having to reheat the lignans in the wood making it really want to kink and break and not be as even as possible and as you can see just as I'm going I'm letting the wood do its thing I'm feeling the wood as it goes And the trick is to kind of keep it always moving. Alright, that works. And then it's the same for this lower portion. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the same process for the other side. And then also for the binding material. Again, it doesn't take all that long to do it properly with a pipe, it's just a little tedious sometimes. And there we go. So I'm just going to do that on the other side. If you'd like to support this, please, it really means a lot to me, you know, Buy some merch, buy a, a, a mug, buy a t-shirt. If you want, use the promo code YouTube uh, to take $500 off of your deposit along with the final sale price of the guitar. And all the links for that are in the description below. See you next week.